is it was when you set this up, originally they were going to charge rates, a reimbursed rates of Medicare plus 5%. We've changed that in the bill. The bill that's online doesn't show it. This one here. But we have changed it since then. When it went through the Energy and Commerce Committee, and they haven't put this online, like this gentleman who wants this pledge is very well taken, is what we've now done is mandated, see at first it's going to be Medicare plus 5% for the first three or four years until it got up on its feet. Nope, we changed it. From day one, they must negotiate like any other private health care plan with a provider for the market. No, that's how the law is right now, if it continues all the way through that. Yeah, but the, the, the burden placed on the public option is quite different than the burden placed on a private health insurer in Philadelphia. If you're independent Blue Cross, if you're at an United Healthcare, you have to go out doctor by doctor by doctor by doctor and come up with an arrangement, or you can think of it hospital by hospital, to come up with an arrangement that works. What the public option does is it leverages the power of the federal government via Medicare and Medicaid in order to fix it. It does. It, it absolutely does. I, it, you need to go back and look at it because that's exactly what it does. It uses Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement and it uses expanded Medicaid eligibility. So it's an, ex it's an expansion of two public health plans that are financially unstable, it, virtually insolvent at this point. These demonstrations have been tried in other states. They don't work. It nearly put the state of Tennessee out of business twice. I was involved. I lived there and studied the program. Uh, I, I think that there are economic underpinnings to the way that this plan and this philosophical legislation, I know it's not final, the way that this works that are incredibly damaged, damaging to the delivery of health care in this region, the financing of health care in this region, and the employment of people, picking in your district, which is overrepresented by health care workers and health insurance workers, workers relative to this district. So he's right. It's a very serious issue. 23% of my district is actually in health service. Um, but I, I, I'm happy to sit down with you again. Uh, excuse me, happy to sit down with you. Um, the way this is presently constructed is it is only subsidized by the co-pays or the premiums of those who join them, not the government. And number two is they have to barter just like anybody else in the marketplace in order to get whatever price they'll pay a provider. But I'm happy to go through. He's wrong. Well, I don't mean he's, excuse me, let me just say. He's wrong on this, but yet, I mean, that's not how the bill is. It's not correct. Their memo from July 26, where they talk about the trillion dollars in outlays that have you described it as a loan. Yes. But that's subsidized by taxpayer dollars. Yeah. What I said so is, so, what know, I said so is, for 10 years, amortized, I made it very clear the government gives it a loan that has to be paid back, and over 10 years, amortized, it has to pay it back, and it's just so you can start it up like any outlay. We need a kickstart to get it going. So that's all it does with government money. After that, there's no federal government involved. No federal money involved. And to your point, yes, that's not correct the way it is set up. 